so noisy. Sparrow to make it a three goal, three point attack lead. He's done it. Melbourne won by three goals. Surely not another one. And what a Oliver streaming through. Bang, 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 bang. Melbourne are the premiers for 2021. And that's just so special for our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home. Hey there, TJ here and welcome to Yeah The D's. This is episode six and we are looking back at round three, Melbourne versus GWS. This match happened at Manuka Oval on April 4th with GWS coming off losses against St Kilda and Fremantle and Melbourne coming off wins against St Kilda and Fremantle. I almost had to watch this game on mute because Kelly Underwood is commentating and my God, she is terrible. Slick kick, slick hair. That's what I call him, slick fridge. Nobody calls him Slick French. He was buzzing around like a mozzie, Cozzy. Anyway, on to the teams. So Jake Malksham is replacing Oscar Baker as the sub for this game, but otherwise we have no other changes. So we have Jeddah, Hunt, Tomlinson and Nathan Jones playing in this game. We're in our grand final side. We had Hibbo, Harrison Petty, Ben Brown and Jake Bowie. Let's get into the first quarter. We get our first goal pretty quickly through some really nice work from Alex Neilborn. Viney dispossessed, Brayshaw just hacks it forward into the pocket, it'll land, they fly. McDonald's in there, Neil Bullen, he can make the ball talk! There's a little bit of niggle between these teams early as displayed here by Brayshaw and Coniglio. Also with DeBoer getting under Viney and Oliver's skin. After the Neil Bullen goal, GWS were able to kick for the next four goals in a row. That was broken after Christian Salem hit Christian Petrarca where he could wheel around and kick a goal. He'll play on and will he make up for Max's miss? Speaking of Gorn's miss, look at where he kicks it from and how close it is to when he kicked the goal after the siren. Whilst GWS are getting a bit of a run on, we are still absolutely dominating with intercept marking. GWS's biggest lead for the match comes halfway through this quarter when they lead by 18 points. The Giants kick five goals in the first quarter with four of those coming within 30 metres of goal. In the end, the Giants were just a bit more effective when they had the ball. So we kick two goals three, 15 to the Giants, five goals one, 31. GWS lead by 16 points. And now onto the second quarter. We get an early goal here through Luke Jackson. And then soon after that, Phil Davis is subbed off injured. Look at Clayton Oliver starting about 15 metres away from that centre bounce. And it's going to work for the Ds because Jones will go on the left boot. The kick to Jackson, too easy to start the quarter. He's yet to kick a goal this season. He's had a few shots, but been a bit inaccurate. But that's a beauty. Perfect start for the quarter for Melbourne. GWS captain Steve Coniglio also gets injured during this quarter. Injuries for GWS will be a bit of their story for this game. After the Jackson goal, Bailey Fritch also puts one on the board. Marking. They've got to work for each other here, Sparrow though. Sparrow into the pocket to Fritch. No, Bailey Fritch. Tough angle for the left footer. He'll really need to guide this one through. DeBoer is really holding Clayton Oliver out of this game. It's the first time in a long time I have not seen Clayton Oliver able to make much of an impact in the first half of an AFL footy game. We had a much better second term where we were able to just beat GWS in contested possessions, 41 to 38. We also controlled the ball by a foot, taking 26 to 14 in marks. And our kicking efficiency was 10% better with us going at 67% with GWS going at 57. Trent Rivers and Jake Lever did some really nice things defensively in this quarter. Some beautiful effort here from Trent Rivers. Spargo gets a free kick and snaps truly from the pocket. He runs around Spargo and he gets another one for the D's. They've kicked three to one in the quarter. And Cozzy also gets a goal here as well. Oh, 
Petrarca, standing start, piercing kick slipped through the hands of Gorn. He thought he was taken high. Still the Ds have got it. Brayshaw, short, clever, creative. So the West Australian teenager who kicked a couple last week against the Saints sends it on its way. So in that quarter, we kicked 4-2-26 to GWS's two straight 12. GWS are leading by two, but we won that quarter by 14 points. And now on to the third. We start the quarter well and Bailey Fritch is able to put a goal on the board. Plenty at stake and it's gone with the first centre clearance. Double tap, went looking for Viney. He's going to get another clearance. And he's going to send it inside 50. Play on. Coming, Fritch did well. Off the pack, can he snap Play another there. one? That's it. That's it. Oh, inside 15 seconds. Pickett is continuing his amazing early year form and kicking another goal here. He ends up with four for the game. Oh. There is some great pressure and tough footy. Someone try and pick it up. Oh, Jetta put his body on the line. He went in hard, Salem. Daniels back on. Couldn't control it. Kelly. Oh, oh Shipley gone. Caught. Some beautiful run here from Jaden Hunt, where his kick to Fritch really should have ended up in a free kick after having his arms chopped. We bring the ball coast to coast for Fritch to be able to kick another goal. On says the umpire. Tomlinson. Almost too short. And then May to Jones. Going back with the flight was Hunt. Eyes on the ball, wobbles its way. Off to Spargo. He's got speed through the midfield to Neil Bullen. Look at the big Ruckman, Max Gorn, charging into attack. Didn't have to get the. So Bailey Fritch has had two kicks tonight for two goals. He makes it three from three. There is some beautiful work here from Hunt and Lever. Where Fritch kicks the ball to Jack Viney. We have another beautiful coast to coast play that unfortunately doesn't pay off in a goal, but it was very close. Tried to get around Ward, does, can release the run of Langdon and he's off. Sprinting across the midfield, he takes one bounce, he takes two. He can use Neil Bullen and he does. Awkward looking handball, it got there eventually. Wheels around, his eyes light up, will it get the distance? The only goal GWS was able to get was through Toby Green. Now that happens when Lever switches the ball, trying to hit up Stephen May, and there is an absolutely phenomenal effort by GWS's Xavier O'Halloran to get a touch to this ball, and then Toby Green read the play and they got the kick out. After this, Matt DeBoer actually goes off injured as well, and now Clayton Oliver can get off the chain. So GWS, halfway through the third quarter, have got three of their four bench spots out of action. To follow up from our decent effort in the second quarter, we kick four goals to 26 again to GWS's one goal six. We are now leading by 18 points and won that quarter by 20 points. Now, I mentioned in the last game that I was noticing trends in our games where we can hold teams pretty much scoreless or goalless for about 25 minutes. Now, in this case, we did have another great run, but GWS were able to get one goal off in that area of time. And now onto the best quarter that we had, the fourth quarter. Now GWS start off this quarter hot with Toby Green kicking two very quick goals in the first two minutes of play. But then after that, it is time for the Ds to put this one away. The Ds kick the next five goals to put the results out of question. There is also an incredible Cozzy goal. Well, most of them are credible anyway. Cozzy kicks his third and fourth goals in this quarter. We'll go again, Neil Bullen. That's a bit of handball, although Petrarca has the strength to get the fend off. Jetta, there's another giant hurt. High ball, top of the square. Haynes should sit under that one, although Buckley got a hand in there. And then another throw. Umpire let that one play on as well, and then could have been a high tackle. Here goes Cozzy again for another one. Cozzy Pickett, he does it every week. He loves it and he's got his fourth. There is some really nice stuff in this quarter from May and Lever. Angus Brayshaw, who only kicks three goals for the year, kicks one of them in this game. Iden Pickett swoops in. Brayshaw, has he got time and space? 
Tom McDonald seems to be looking a little bit frustrated when he gives away this high free kick. I noticed some other really nice things throughout the game, like Tom Sparrow putting pressure on the kicker here. There is a cool little uh, boot off the floor here by Trent Rivers, which almost hits Tom McDonald. Max Gorn takes another intercept mark here. After GWS kicked their third goal for the quarter, we had another two options to put goals on the board through Charlie Spargo and Max Gorn, but they didn't come to fruition. He dabs that and misses. So at the end of the final quarter, we kicked five goals, five, 35 to GWS's 3-1-19. We won the last quarter by 14 and run out the game winners by 34 points. Now while the Giants still had three out on the bench, Melbourne dominated forward half intercepts, 37 to 15. Forward half tackles, 39 to 16. And forward 50 disposals, 64 to 27. So you can see we spent a lot more time in our forward 50 with the ball. Now on to Yeah The Good. So we were challenged by GWS early and they kicked five goals in that first quarter. After that, Melbourne won every quarter. We held GWS to only one goal in the third. And after being challenged, we were able to run out a comfortable 34 point win. I think any time you win by five goals, it's comfortable. On to yeah, the bad. And my first point is, is that we didn't really have a suppressor for Toby Green. He was able to kick five goals two out of GWS's 11 goals two score. We had a bit of a slow start, but ultimately it didn't cost us this game. And I feel like we made this game a little bit harder for ourselves. GWS only really had 13 scoring shots and we had 27. We had a lot more options and a lot more chances to put this game away. On to the centre bounce stats now, and we had 30 centre bounces for the game. Max Gorn took 20 of them, and Luke Jackson took 10 of them. It's good to see Luke Jackson getting a bit more time in the middle here. Clayton Oliver attended 25 centre bounces, and Christian Petrarca attended 22. Jack Viney attended 19 centre bounces, and then the rest of them were shared. Were shared between Tom Sparrow, James Jordan, Cozzy Pickett, and Nathan Jones. With our kick-ins, with GWS only kicking two points, we only had two kick-ins. Adam Tomlinson took one and Stephen May took the other. Both of them ended up in play-ons. On to the Brownlow votes, and in the Brownlow, Toby Green from GWS got one vote, Christian Petrarca got two votes, and Max Gorn got three. On to the coaches' votes, and Ed Langdon got one, Jack, Jake Lever got two, Christian Petrarca got three, Keziah Pickett got three, Jack Viney got five, Toby Green got eight, and Max Gorn with the perfect 10. On to my votes. And I gave Max Gorn the six. He had nine marks, five contested, and three were intercepts to go along with his two goals, two, and 28 hit outs. I gave five votes to Ed Langdon. He had 10 inside 50s and 903 meters gained. Jake Lever got the four votes with his 16 intercepts, five of them being marks, and 460 meters gained. I gave Christian Petrarca the three for 29 disposals, 419 meters gained, eight inside 50s and eight score involvements. Jaden Hunt, I gave two votes, especially for having 25 disposals, seven inside 50s, 450 meters gained. And the one vote I gave to Keziah Pickett. He had four goals and he was very busy all game. So on to the leaderboard, and we now have Clayton Oliver as our round three leader with 11 votes. We've got a bit of a spread between Christian Petrarca, Jake Lever and Max Gorn on eight and seven votes respectively. 30 seconds left. Little one from Viney. Surely not another one. Handball to Oliver. Streaming through. Bang! Bang, bang, bang! Fritch's at the start of the third to get our ball rolling. Right 50. Lay on. Coming. Fritch did well. Off the pack. Can he snap right another one? That's hard. My second favourite goal was Cozzy spoiling the GWS player and then kicking the goal in the third. He gathers with the left hand and feigns right and then comes back to snap over his left shoulder. Yep. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. My favourite goal for the game was Neil Bullen's snap from the boundary in the first quarter. A roving. Even yeah. that view down the ground there, Jared. The Melbourne players set up behind the, not a stoppage, but the scrimmage where that ball got kicked to, beautifully placed yep. around the footy. Alex Neil Bullen, beautiful crumb. Read it perfectly. Had a good start to the season, Neil Bullen. So that's it for round three, 2021 Melbourne versus GWS. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe. And of course, have a great day and go deep. Petrarca! Petrarca! Oh, wow! How good is that? But the crowd noise level here is illegal, JB. It is so noisy.
it's just so special for uh, it's like our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home.